going on space monkeys welcome to political fight club i'm robert durden we're going to continue finish up this chapter we were so rudely interrupted earlier by my six-year-old daughter apologize for that we're just going to pick up right where we left off page 314 the chapter is called the treatment is you these critics saw the potential for a conflict of interest one of them was andrew kolodny a physician who watched the epidemic unfold from his addiction specialty in brooklyn Kolodny later co-founded Physicians for Responsible Opiate Prescribing, an organization of doctors critical of the new opiate prescribing. Portnoy, quote, starts lecturing around the country as a religious-like figure. The megaphone for Portnoy is Purdue, which flies in people to resorts to hear him speak. It was a compelling message. Docs have been letting patients suffer. Nobody really gets addicted. It's been studied. Purdue created organizations that were meant to look grassroots. They gave loads of money to front organizations which approached state medical boards about liberalizing regulations for prescribing. Every effort to control the problem, if it ended in less prescribing, you had all these groups saying, what you're going to do is bad for pain patients. You now have an industry of pain specialists and this is their business model. They have a practice of patients who will never miss an appointment and who pay cash. The whole thing is really outrageous. Katz, however, saw another story at work. Katz admired Portnoy, who, he said, had spent a career searching for better ways to relieve his patients' real and considerable pain. Portnoy had helped make pain a topic of research. Moreover, Portnoy was always clear that pain treatment needed balance and time. Doctors needed to be selective in the patients who received this treatment. But, quote, people want simple solutions, Katz said. People didn't want to hear that, and the commercial interests didn't want to emphasize that. Meanwhile, Katz said, physicians everywhere faced insistent patients who felt entitled to relief. You're standing there with keys to the opioid cabinet. Suffering is certainly, certainly real, he said. For years, the doctor had to say, I wish I could give them to you, but they're addictive and you can overdose. I want to, but I really can't. The keys to the kingdom were there, but the doctor as gatekeeper could not in good conscience open them. In this context... Portnoy and Foley's 86 paper became influential because, Katz said, quote, it was telling doctors what they already wanted to hear. Your patients are suffering. Aren't we so much smarter than the scientists of many years ago? Now we know that if you take opioids for chronic pain, you can't get addicted. You had a new priesthood that emerged, a priesthood of prescribing opiates for chronic pain and a small number of pharmaceutical companies collaborating with those doctors. These companies had these tools, these new drugs. Doctors were being told by the mechanics, the pain specialists, that the tools worked. I think it's more useful to look at people as fundamentally reasonable, looking at why they did the things that they did. You had a whole bunch of reasonable people doing what they thought reasonable, and it didn't work well. As Katz spoke, I thought back on all I'd heard and seen and thought, it remarkable that all this could be part of the story behind why a town in Nayarit, Mexico, was now selling gobs of heroin in some of the wealthiest and safest places in America. I told him that I thought it just as bizarre that all that reasoning he, he referred to could, in some measure, hinge on the misinterpretation of a one-paragraph letter to the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine in January 1980, written by Herschel Jick, who intended nothing of the sort. Porter and Jick is amazing for the absence of information in it, Katz said. But that paragraph gives you, gives you relief from your inner conflict. It's like drinking from the breast. All of a sudden, the comfort washes over you. All right, I'm needed upstairs now. We're going to continue on page 316 in the next episode. The Internet of Dope is the name of the chapter. Keep fighting that good fight out there, guys. I'll talk to you later.